Um, it'll be all right. Okay. Yeah, that's why you just rewind. Um, so again, guys, replace f of x with y. And again, guys, this should make sense. We looked at the graph. The x and the y coordinates are swapped. So algebraically, we're going to swap the x and y variables, right? I mean, that's why we're doing it. You can see in the graphs that the x and y coordinates are swapped. The problem comes in where students usually have problems with this is using reverse order of operations. That's why I said if you didn't do that investigation, do that investigation. Check your answers because you will see mistakes that you, you will see mistakes on your order of operations. I have the answers available for you. So now when I have this, so, so is everybody at least good to this point? Because this from algebra 2, you should be like, I got it from here. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention domain and range. But um, once, the one thing, guys, from domain and range, we don't need the inverse here. Because can't we figure out the domain and range from the graph already? Like once we know what the graph looks like, we can find the domain and range, right? And the example here, same thing. Do I know what 3x minus 4, like in general, looks like for as far as the domain? Yes? Well, actually, I'll, I'll, explore, I'll show it in a second. Because that's what we do. That's the first of all. That's the rule process. But remember, the graph, the points on the domain, the points on one graph is swapped uh, with the inverse. So the purpose of this is how to find, how to find the inverse, and then do the domain range. So I have x squared equals three y minus four. Add four, add four. X squared plus four equals three y. Then I'll divide by three on both sides, and I'll write this as f inverse of x equals one third x squared plus 4. Now, you obviously could distribute that to 1 third x squared you know, plus 4 thirds. But here's the issue, guys. Do you, what's the transformation? Does anybody know what the transformation is here? It's not right 4. You've got to factor out the 3, right? Ah, remember that b? Stinks, doesn't it? So this is actually right 4 thirds which is 1 and 1 third, roughly. And then you also have a horizontal uh, compression of 3. So whatever, the graph looks something like this. Regardless of how good you remember what you were already taught in transformations of functions, can we determine what the domain is? The domain is basically all numbers greater than 4 thirds. Right? That's a transformation of 4 thirds to the right. Domain is going to be 4 thirds to the right. The range, could you guys, can we at least all agree that the range is 0 to infinity? Yeah. You're not shifting up or down, no reflection? OK. Now, guys, what is this? This is a quadratic, right? It's kind of weird with fractions. But again, it's a quadratic at a vertical shift of 4 and 1 thirds. Does that look like the inverse of that graph? Uh-uh, right? That doesn't look like the inverse at all. I, need to, I only need half of the parabola to make the radical. So which half? Should I take the negative half or the positive half? The positive half. So actually what I have to do, guys, is I have to, in this example, I'm creating something that has, I, since I had to square both sides, I'm creating something extra. So I've got to put in restriction. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, that erases that. And then you guys can see that works. And I have five minutes. Please do not put things away, guys.